Hello, uh, welcome. I'm Bertie from Matthew All of the Weddings and today I'm talking about so you're thinking about having a destination wedding. Uh, what I'm going to do is talk about the five W's of why you might think about having a destination wedding. Those being who, what, where, why and when. Hashtag may have stolen them from marketing degree I did. <laughs> anyway, first off we're going to talk about who. Um, so, who do you want to be at your wedding? If you're having a wedding where you're from, you'll most likely invite everyone you know. Um, your parents will invite some people, you'll invite some distant friends, some distant cousins. It ends up being a really big thing. When you're thinking about a destination wedding, you have to start thinking about who specifically you want to be there. Because you're asking them to take time away, and also, if you're going that far, you only want to really see people on your wedding day who you are really close to. You see them in your everyday life. You've, when you picture your wedding, you've envisioned seeing them at the edge of the aisle as you're walking down to marry your partner. So really think about who you might want there in terms of a practical sense. Um, having a destination wedding is a really great way to kind of get rid of some of the people that you might feel more obliged to invite rather than you would actually want there because you can potentially look at having a smaller ceremony, something a bit more intimate um, or you can literally just go far enough away that you know that they won't even bother attending, in which case you didn't want them there anyway so it's perfect. Though for those that you do want to have at your wedding, your close friends and your close family, people that you've always seen celebrating with you, you do need to think a little bit practically as well. Um, think, where are you guys flying from? You and your partner, where are the majority of the guests flying from? Is there direct flight paths? Are there international hubs on the way? Are flights always consistently very expensive or can you get them quite reasonably? How to think about all of these practical elements when it comes to the costs, but also the time it takes. When you get to that country, how far away is the venue from the airport? Are there various modes of public transport? Can they get a train? Um, are you putting on a coach? Can they hire cars easy enough and drive for an hour, maybe two hours? These are all quite practical things um, that are worth thinking about, especially if you want the majority of your guest list to attend because a lot of people might not travel. They might have never traveled. They might have stayed within the country and not really gone as far as you're looking to go. Uh, so you really need to make things as easy as possible when you're thinking about who you're inviting um, and who you actually want there. If you want certain people there, maybe think about having a destination wedding that's easily accessible. If you're trying to weed people out, then don't worry about it so much. Ultimately, as long as you have the people you love and it's in a venue you love, then it would all work out fine. Next one, what? What do you envision for your wedding day? What style, what look are you going to go for? Um, when you picture your wedding, and most people picture their wedding when growing up, what it could look like, or even when they attend other people's weddings, or if they're in a deep Pinterest spiral and looking at everything, everyone generally has an idea. Make sure that the what matches up with the destination. If your style is very specific, if you're looking at having an outside wedding by the sea, Obviously, you're looking at a destination that is going to be hot, um, but also is by the coast. You'll be looking at venues that have suitable coastal areas. Um, so think about what you want. Does your style fit with certain cultures? Um, is it going to be a relaxed wedding? Is it going to be quite formal? If it's going to be formal, then you might be looking at France. You might be looking at uh, chateaus that have that grandeur. If you're looking at something a bit more relaxed in style, you might be looking at Italy, somewhere where it's a bit more informal, everything's kind of shared platters for dining and very soft lighting. You might be looking for something a bit quirky and modern, in which case Iceland, Iceland or somewhere in Austria or Switzerland might be a really great option for you. And it's thinking outside the box a little bit. When it comes to the what, think about what it is you want and how you want your wedding to look and to flow. Um, also, budget. What is your budget? Uh, making sure that your budget matches up to the vision that you have for your destination wedding. There's no secret that some countries, some areas of countries are a lot more expensive than other because they have the reputation, they have that higher quality of life. The exchange rate might be a lot higher in that country as well. For example, the south of France on the Riviera. 
It's a very popular, stunning area and it's known for its events. So venues are generally a bit more expensive. Catering is generally a bit more expensive. So that's something that you have to factor in. If you, even within its own country, if you go to northern France, uh, it's a little more rural. There's still some stunning buildings, um, but because it's not as uh, densely populated in terms of the events, um, you can get something a bit more reasonable. But because of France has quite a well-established reputation for wedding, as a country, it's a lot more expensive than potentially other European countries, such as uh, Portugal or Spain, which are equally as stunning, but you can get things at slightly reduced rates because they don't have a, as big a wedding industry. Looking outside of Europe, uh, you can go further afield. If you can go to certain places in Asia, yes, they might be a bit more expensive to get to, but when you're there, due to the exchange rates, the costs are generally quite lower. Uh, same as, uh, for example, Oman as well. Beautiful country, um, and the costs are a lot more reasonable than, for example, in the UK where we're based. So think about what your budget is, think about what your style is, and then see if the two matches and that venue uh, country that suits both of those elements. Because you will soon learn if you're planning on your own, if your vision for your wedding is here, but your budget is here, there's going to be a little bit of disappointment because your budget doesn't stretch to your vision. However, if you consider going to a different destination, that gap might become a bit smaller. But ultimately, I say trust in whatever suppliers you're working with um, and they will guide you in the right direction. Next off, where? Pretty obvious. We're talking about, so you want to have a destination wedding. Where do you want to go? Um, anywhere, really. There's no limits to where you can go. Planning a wedding is has the same sort of pillars, uh, same, same requirements. You need to communicate with your guests. You need to research your suppliers. You need to have a design, a flow concept, and you need to speak to everyone, whether it be your couple, uh, your um, your guests, or whether it be your si uh, suppliers throughout. Uh, and you really need to make sure that you're invested and you enjoy the process. So where you go actually doesn't really hinder much. All you need to do is make sure that you allow the time uh, to prepare and you fall in love wherever country you're in. Um, Basically, we're quite lucky if you're an English speaker and you're only an English speaker, the wedding industry throughout the world uh, generally has multilingual people in different hotels, in different venues, caterers. They usually have people that speak many different languages so they can cater to those traveling and having their weddings abroad. Um, so that isn't so much of an issue if you are worried about any language barriers. So that's something to bear in mind. The other reason uh, people might be concerned is also about maybe time zones as well. Um, when you're speaking to suppliers, you just need to be a bit more flexible. It might be midnight for them and it might be mid-afternoon for you. Uh, so to calls might be at slightly different times. So make sure that you're flexible and you allow enough time to do it. But apart from that, follow your heart, go wherever you want and don't let anyone basically shame you for not maybe following tradition, which is getting married at home. Next one, why? Why are you thinking about a destination wedding? Why? This could be anything. This could be you've been somewhere, you have an emotional connection to it. You and your partner might have got engaged in a certain country and you want to really relive that. It might be a country that's linked to your heritage and you want your friends to experience a bit of your culture. It might just be a case of you don't want to do the same wedding that everyone has done locally and you want to really push the boundaries a little bit and go somewhere completely different. That's all valid reasons. Why do you want to do this wedding abroad? Another reason which I like to think about of why I would potentially want a destination wedding is because local weddings, if we ever have a wedding local to where we live, it would probably just be the one day. Just one quite intense day of seeing everyone, which would be lovely. But a destination wedding offers a lot more opportunities to spend time with your friends and family. Additional events, you can have a welcome party, you have the wedding day, you can have a brunch uh, pool party the next day. You have spread out the excitement, you spread out the joy. And it's a lot more of a holiday feel rather than everyone has to get back to work two days later. So why is actually very important? Sit down and think, am I doing this for what reason? And that reason might really influence the style of the wedding as well. So, for example, because I wanted to be a bit more informal and relaxed, I might be leaning to more 
towards Italy, I'd be looking at a venue that has the option to do a welcome party and maybe have to pull for the next day. So it really sort of influences the direction that you go for your destination wedding. Finally, when. When do you want to get married? Um, so this has two sides to it. So it has a more practical side in terms of um, how long physically is it going to take you to plan this wedding, making sure that you have the time. Destination weddings will take a little bit more time to plan um, because you've got those time zones. You can't just pop to a venue and have a look. You've got to schedule trips to go have a look at these venues, to speak with your suppliers, do a food tasting, do hair and makeup trial. It requires this little bit more planning. Um, but as long as you're prepared and you have the time around your everyday job, um, you can absolutely make it work. Or alternatively, get a planner and they will do a lot of the work for you uh, to make it as stress-free as possible. And again, we can pretty much plan weddings in any time period, so not to worry. The other thing when is weather. If you're looking at a certain country um, and you're having visions of an outdoor ceremony, a dinner under sparkling lights outside with the stars, that is going to play a big part of where you choose and when you choose to go. It's got to be a country that's hot, but also it's got to be a season within that country that is conducive to good weather as well. Now, there's two sides to think about good weather. Good weather is sometimes people just think of it being hot, really beautiful, but it can very much become an issue if it's too hot. So make sure you don't just pick the hottest month of the year just because you're guaranteed to be too hot. Because once you're wearing a wedding dress or a suit and all your guests are dressed up, it becomes very uncomfortable very quickly. So if you're thinking of when, think of the most suitable temperature periods versus dry periods as well for that area of that country on different dates. Um, and see how the best time, time is there. The other thing is obviously wet weather as well. You want to go in the driest seasons um, so it doesn't rain. Um, always, always have a backup plan for if it rains. Um, sometimes it might cost a little bit extra money to have a tent on standby, but always, always do it. Quite often as well, if we know it's going to be hot, uh, we will have a backup plan for if it's too hot as well, which might be um, moving certain places to a shade, ceremony in the shade, or actually pushing back the schedule so it gives the time for the temperature to drop and the sun to drop over the horizon a little bit as well. Um, so when is a really big aspect of planning your wedding and choosing your destination as well. So that's the five W's, who, what, where, why, when. Who, how many guests, and who specifically do you want there? And trying to make it as easy as possible to guarantee you that they are there. What, what style do you want for your wedding? And also, what is your budget? Um, where, simple, where do you want to go? Why, why do you want to go there? Do you have an emotional connection? Is it somewhere you've always wanted to go? Have you seen a picture um, of another wedding and you're like, that's what I want? Have a real think about why, because that will influence the direction you go with the planning. And when, when do you want to go? When are you gonna have this wedding? And also how long is it gonna take you to plan it? So what date are you gonna choose from the day that you get engaged? Hopefully that's been helpful. Um, we love destination weddings. Um, we plan them all the time. Uh, we'd like to think become experts in them, but also we do love doing weddings in our own country as well. So having weddings locally to you is just as wonderful as if you had a destination you want. So really think about if this is for you. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to get in contact. Uh, we love chatting with people. And if anyone has any ideas on other videos they might like us to talk about, just pop them on the comments below and we will try and respond. Have a great day, bye.